In this video, we shall show how to sketch the graph of a hyperbola whose equation is given in standard form and we are given a center, but the center is not at the origin. Theorem 1.8 hyperbola with center hk. So before we get there, we shall lay down our equation, standard equation for a parabola or for a hyperbola, I'm sorry, with center hk. So we have two sets of equations here. One is when the principal axis or the transverse axis is horizontal. Our center is hk, and so this is our form. x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 1. And the coordinates of our center are hk. c is always greater than a. And c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So what information can we get from a, b, and c? So again, a will tell you the distance of your vertex from the center. b will tell you the endpoints, the endpoints of our conjugate axis. And then c, we need c to locate the focus or the foci of our hyperbola. So when our principal axis is horizontal, the sketch of our hyperbola might look something like this. So this is the center, and this is your principal axis, the line segment connecting the vertices is your transverse axis. But we have another set of equation. So that would be when the principal axis or the transverse axis is vertical. It is standing up. The transverse axis is standing up. Okay, so be careful. H, so this is our x-coordinate of our center, hk. And these are our two uh, denominators, b squared. b squared. b, again, has something to do with locating the endpoints of your conjugate axis. It's always the denominator after subtraction. And these are our conditions for c. C, again, is greater than A. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So our hyperbola might look something like this. It's a transverse axis is vertical. We shall now graph a hyperbola with center HK, and the transverse axis is vertical. So this is the equation. What do we do? We shall find the center, the vertices, the foci, and and points of the conjugate axis. In one corner of your paper, doodle this hyperbola because that will tell you the orientation of the transverse axis. So this one, let's say for example, this clue is not given to us. Okay, so since the term x or x squared is the term that comes after subtraction, our principal axis is vertical. It would help you. It would help you if you will doodle this or hyperbola in one corner of your paper. Okay, so what is the center? Okay, so H, K. Okay, so you might think that H ought to be 2. No, it's not 2. It's negative 2. Okay, because this one, okay, so let me show that to you. So X plus 2, the, our form is X minus. X minus H. And so that became x plus 2 because it's x minus negative 2. So our center is negative 2 and 3. That's the coordinates. Okay, so the denominator that comes after subtraction is always your b squared. So b squared is 9, b is 3, and the other denominator would be a squared. a squared is 16, a is 4, and... Again, c, c squared is equal to the square, no, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so it's going to be c squared is equal to 25. So the square root of c is 5. Okay, so we shall need these values to locate the coordinates of your vertices and endpoints of your conjugate axis. So the a here, the a always goes with the vertex. So our principal axis is vertical. So coming from the center, this is your center. Okay, so this is your center, a negative 2, 3. One vertex would be above the center. So we shall use 
the value of a there, 4. So its x-coordinate is negative 2, the same as the x-coordinate of your center, but the y-coordinate is going to be 3 plus 4. Okay, so that is one vertex. Again, we will locate one vertex below the center. So again, the x-coordinate is negative 2, and the y-coordinate is going to be from the center, that's 3, minus 4. It's negative 1. What else? The foci. Okay, again, the foci is along your principal axis. So the x-coordinates of your foci stays the same. It's negative 2. It's the y-coordinate that's going to change. And we shall use your c. c goes with the focus or the foci. So we add 5 and we subtract 5 from 3. That's the y-coordinate of your center. So these are the two coordinates of your vertices, and these are your foci. What else? The endpoints of your conjugate axis. So you will add B. B goes with the endpoints of your conjugate axis. So we shall add 3 to negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3, that's going to be 1. And the other one located to the left is negative 2 minus 3, it's negative 5. That is our conjugate axis. So what else? So this is our equation. Find the equations of the asymptotes. Okay, so you know what asymptotes are. These are two intersecting lines, and our hyperbola follows the direction of these asymptotes. Now, if you are like me, who detests memorizing formula okay you know what it's confusing if you were to memorize the equation for the asymptotes because you have two sets of equation one when the principal axis is vertical and one when the principal axis is horizontal and you have pairs of equations so it can be confusing so my advice to you is something like this equate the terms or the equation to zero solve for y or solve for y minus 3. I think it's easier to do this, to derive the asymptotes from this instead of memorizing your equations. Okay, so let us isolate y minus 3. Okay, transposition. Okay, transposition, the denominator. Okay, so I will now get the square root, the square root of both sides. So it's going to be y minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3, okay? And the square root cancels this, this exponent. These are, in fact, already the equations of your asymptotes. And you know what? This is written in, it is, this one is written in points loop form. You know, your asymptotes intersects or intersect at the center. And the center has these coordinates, negative 2, 3. And this one would be the slopes of your asymptotes. One is rising up for over 3. One has a negative slope, which is negative 4 over 3. Okay, so what else? What else must we do? Draw the asymptotes and sketch the hyperbola. Okay, so these are the equations for our asymptotes. This is written in, in point-slope form. Okay, so this is the slope or the slopes. And the point that we are talking about here is the point of intersection of your two asymptotes. It has coordinates negative 2 and 3, which is also the center of your hyperbola. We locate the vertices and the endpoints of our conjugate axis. So what do we do next? Okay, so the instructions here is to draw the asymptotes and sketch the hyperbola. You know what? We have different techniques for sketching the hyperbola, but this is my, what I'm going to show to you is my preferred way to sketch the hyperbola. What I will do is I will pay attention to this, two intersecting lines, the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. They, in fact, define a rectangle. And then I will draw the line, a line through the opposite non-adjacent corners of your rectangle, and those two lines are in fact your asymptotes. So what do I do from here? Well, actually, you can now begin to sketch your hyperbola, okay? starting from your vertex. 
you will trace the arms of your hyperbola. It will follow the direction of your asymptotes. Okay, now, you know what? Uh, this graph has so many clutter because the only graph that we are actually concerned here would be the hyperbola. These are the branches of your hyperbola. And these whole things, these other things here, they are, they help us sketch the graph of our hyperbola. But, but in the end, they are actually not necessary for us to show the graph of your hyperbola. So we can remove them. And we can zoom out so that we can see the larger picture of our hyperbola. So that one, the hyperbola and your two asymptotes.